Pippin Pharmaceuticals in association with Higher Secondary Principals Forum. Hello students, so welcome back to the continuing session of the Ray Optics. So last session we learnt about the dispersion, correct? So today we are going to learn about some natural and some fascinating phenomenon. So what you can see on the screen? Yes, it's in rainbow, a beautiful rainbow, isn't it? So let's see how has it been formed and the physics will answer to you all the questions. So a rainbow is formed when the ray of light strikes a rain drop. There are three things are happening. There is a dispersion, refraction and the total internal reflection. Now to see a rainbow, the sun has to be behind the observer. So over here you can see I have the spherical rain drop. There is a sunlight. Over here we are having the refraction and the dispersion. The light is splits up into the seven colors, seven beautiful colors. And when it strikes the inner surface, it is totally reflected. Again we have the refraction at this point because it's moving on from the denser to the rarer. And finally when it comes out, the violet light is subtended with an angle of 40 degrees and the red with an angle of 42 degrees with the incoming ray and the remaining colors falls in between this. So this is how a rainbow is formed. Now we have got two types, we have got primary and the secondary. So let us go for the primary rainbow. So here it is a process with wherein we have got the two raindrop. So the ray is incident, it suffers the refraction, total internal reflection and then the splitting of the colors that is the violet and the red from the second same procedure is happening. So here we have the splitting of the colors and the observer sees the red on top and the violet below. So when he sees this pattern, it is the primary rainbow which has been formed. Again it has got the three steps, we have the refraction, total internal reflection and refraction back. So it is a combined effect of three things. Now let us go for the secondary rainbow. Now secondary rainbow is a combined effect of course of the refraction, dispersion and a total internal reflection but over here it suffers total internal reflection at two places. So the finally an observer sees the violet on top and red below and the secondary rainbow is fainter than the primary that is because it suffers two total internal reflection. So this is how is the formation of a rainbow. So I can show you all a picture. So here you can see a primary rainbow and a secondary wherein secondary is not fainter than the primary. Now there are some more interesting phenomenon, some interesting facts. Now what you can see, of course you can see a beautiful scene. We have got the blue sky and the white clouds. Now you have ever wondered why the sky looks blue and why the clouds are white? Yes, your physics is going to give you all these answers. When the blue, the sunlight, if I have told you, it is a combination of all the colors. When the sunlight passes to the atmosphere, it gets dispersed. The one with the lower wavelength, the color with the lower wavelength scatters more that is because of the relay scattering law which is amount of scattering is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the wavelength. So the one with the lower wavelength scatters the 
most so blue scatters more now the question arises the violet has a lower wavelength than the blue yes correct violet does scatters more than the blue but our eyes are more sensitive to the blue color hence we see the sky as blue now what is the reasoning about why the clouds are white now we know that cloud has got the dust particle has the rain drop now these are slightly bigger in size and they do not obey the release scattering law they scatter all the colors equally in all the direction hence we see the clouds white wow isn't it we have the sun at the sunrise and the sunset there is a reddish appearance of the sun right and why is it during the sunrise and the sunset the sunlight passes through a larger distance so the colors with the lower wavelength are already scattered the one which is least scattered that is the red which reaches to the observer's eye and hence we see the sun in red and colors so haven't you seen we have got so many answers to so many different facts isn't it why the sky is blue why there is a reddish appearance correct so it's something really beautiful so let us go ahead now this is the last sub topic of our the optics chapter that is we'll be learning about the optical instrument we'll be learning about the microscope we'll be learning about the telescope now we have been bestowed with one optical instrument that's our eye isn't it we are so lucky to have it so that we can see this beautiful world around us so let us first learn about the eye and then we move on to the optical instrument so we have the figure of eye over here the light enters the cornea we have got the pupil iris there is a ciliary muscle which is holding the lens here is the retina onto which the image is formed and the image formed is interpreted by the brain which takes the optical nerves takes the information to the brain now we need to learn about a term known as accommodation it is about the ciliary muscles they contract they expand so as to have a good image on the retina by changing the focal length of the lens so that is done by the ciliary muscles now we can see the distant object you can see i can see an infinite the object which is placed at a infinite distance like the mountain the rivers we can see at a big distance now what about the near point there you go the closest distance for which the lens can focus light on the retina is called least distance of distinct vision the closest if i hold an object okay if i hold an object at 25 degree at 25 cm i can see it very clear closer than that the image is going to be a blur image so the distance the closest distance at which you can have a good image is termed as the least distance of distinct vision or the near point and it is given by 25 cm okay so normal the standard value is 25 cm in some aged people this may increase for the younger kids this may decrease also but standard value is given as 25 cm wherein which gives you a correct image on the retina now though we take good care of our eyes there are some defects do come in some people so let us move on to the defects there is the optical defects of the eye first is myopia or short sightedness or near sightedness so what is happening over here can you see the image this is an object 
the rays are coming the image is formed before the retina isn't it we want the image to be formed on the retina so there is a defect correct now how to correct the defect the rays are converging over here just before the retina so i need to have a diverging lens isn't it so here i have placed a concave lens so that i get the image right on to the retina next is the hypermetropia or long sightedness or far sightedness in this the image instead of forming on the retina is forming behind the retina so this has been corrected by using a convex lens astigmatism in this case you can see the image is formed on the retina but how is the image image is distorted a person suffering from this defect cannot focus on the horizontal and vertical lines simultaneously if he sees a wire mesh he sees it very distorted either one is perfect the vertical or the horizontal so how this has been corrected this is corrected by using a cylindrical lens so use a cylindrical lens and image will be clear so that is the defect which can be corrected next is is phobia which is arises due to aging and that is corrected by the converging lens so these were the defects which occurs in the eye so let us go ahead now we are going to learn about the optical instrument as i have told you all now listen carefully to the first one we'll be learning about the microscope then we will shift on to the compound microscope and then to the telescope so you listen carefully the first one because next two are really easy if you understand this one so let us move on now what do i have over here check out the figure so over here you can see the eye you can see our eye a beautiful eye and there is an object which is been kept and there is a an angle subtended by the object and the object has been kept at the least distance of distinct vision so how you can visualize it say suppose i am holding the object that's my eyes it is making an angle at the base and it will make an angle at the top so there is an angle which has been subtended now i want to know about the magnification yes the magnifying power hence i have kept the object at d why because if i keep it away from the d isn't it that your angle is going to go it is going to decrease and i cannot keep lesser than d why lesser than d the image is going to be blur i am not interested in the blur image but i want a clear image so i have kept the object at d is the height h so what do i get the theta as opposite upon the edge that is the h by d so i can take the tan of the theta so theta at the object okay now going ahead now what i have done over here i just looked at my object just by the naked eyes now i have placed a lens why that is because i need magnification isn't it a simple microscope wherein you need a magnification so here i have placed the lens okay and the eye has been focused at the infinity the object has been kept at the focus and this is the focal lens so image definitely is somewhere at the infinite positions so this is my theta i that is the theta image now the lens which has been used is used is of the very short focal length so much so that is less than even d so for our microscope we are using a lens with a very short focal length now this is also termed as the normal adjustment that is when the ciliary muscles are relaxed no straining of it that is the normal adjustment where you can see the image without any strain okay so what is the theta i over here theta i is going to be h upon f again i have taken tan of theta so h upon f 
I am interested in the magnification, correct? So, magnification is given as angle at the image to the angle at the object. So, take these two equations, cancel out and this is what we get that is m is d upon f. Have I got the magnification? Yes, check out, yes. That is because look at the denominator we have the f and I told you it is of the short focal length. So, shorter the focal length definitely high is going to be the magnification. Okay, so, I have achieved the magnification when the image is at the infinity. Is that clear? So, let us move on to the next. Now, let us check out when the image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision. That is my aim, isn't it? I want to get it at the least distance. So, here is your ray diagram. So, the observer that we, you know, when we are using the microscope, we are at the lens. So, I is focused on the near point. I am interested in getting the image at the near point. So, that was my object. So, the rays are coming over here. This object I have moved little closer to the lens. Initially, I told you it was kept on the focus. So, the image was at the infinity. Now, slightly closer. And we know that when it is in between focus and the optical center, we get a virtual image. Okay? We get a virtual image which is enlarged and on the same side and it is at the erect. So, we know this it is defined as the ratio of the angle subtended by the image to the object when both are at the least distance of distinct vision. So, going in the same way we get theta i upon theta naught as these two equation which I have just grabbed one from the previous one cancel out h and what you get is magnification as d upon u. Okay, so, this is image formed at the least distance of the distinct vision. I have just taken the same thing, I have written it over here. Now, this magnification I want in terms of the focal length. So, let me use the lens formula which is 1 upon f equals to 1 upon v minus 1 up by u. Rearrange it, you just get 1 by u on this side, then it becomes 1 by f. Use the sign convention. We know image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision, so it is minus v, u minus u. Substitute this, you can divide it by d. Sorry, you have multiplied over here by d, so the d d get cancelled, and what ultimately remains? is this. So, d upon u is 1, 1 plus d by f and we know that d upon u is nothing but the magnification. So, magnification in terms of the focal length that we have got is 1 plus d upon f. So, this is the magnification when the image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision. So, this was about the microscope when the image is formed at the infinity and when the image is formed at the least distance of distinct vision. So now, let us move on to the compound microscope. If in case you have followed this, compound microscope will be very simple. Now, that is your ray diagram. Now, simple microscope, you know we just use a one simple convex lens and we have got a certain magnification and let me tell you the magnification was a reciprocal with regards to the focal length and in microscope we use a short focal length but there is a practical limits how short you can use it to increase your magnification. So, instead of that we move on to the compound microscope and we choose two lenses one which is termed as the objective one the next one is the eyepiece and this eyepiece works exactly like the simple microscope. So, what the objective does? We have the object in front of the objective which forms an image 
it's in real inverted and slightly enlarged so this enlarged image is acting as an object for the eyepiece and the final image is highly enlarged isn't it we want a highly enlarged image so this is the ray diagram for the compound microscope so let us move for the derivation so magnification due to objective is given as l upon f not l is the tube length m o stands for the magnification by the objective see objective is the lens close to the object eyepiece is the lens close to the eye which you check out okay so this is the magnification by the objective now when the final image is formed at the near point m e that is magnification at the eyepiece you get as 1 plus d upon f e now this i have completely taken up from the simple microscope equation that is when it is formed at the near point e is your eyepiece this is when the final image is formed under infinity we know m e is will be given by d upon f e so the total magnification when the image is formed at the infinite position is going to be the product of magnification at the objective and the magnification at the eyepiece that is l upon f not into d upon f e so you can check out students this is what is the magnification by the compound microscope when the image is formed at the infinity l stands for the tube lens so this was about the compound microscope moving on to the next that is the telescope so that's your ray diagram you can see clearly the objective has the bigger size than the eyepiece that is the rays are coming from the distant object telescope basically used to check out the celestial objects the dis the objects which are far away that is the stars the planets so the rays are coming from far objects we have the observer over here and finally we get the image so the magnification is given as f not upon f e that is f objective f eyepiece now refracting telescope is used for terrestrial as well as the astronomical observation now the main consideration when we are using a telescope main thing we want is a high light gathering power and high resolutions correct now in order to have a light gathering power the objective size has to be more bigger the aperture has to be more so the largest lens is of the diameter of 1 meter and which is in usa definitely can you imagine the bigger size but this comes with a certain disadvantage such a big telescope becomes really very heavy bulky for the support so we have the another type which is known as the reflecting telescope there are many advantages they use we have the mirrors used in it so instead of lens we use the mirrors and the advantages is there is no chromatic aberration there is no spherical aberration they are free from it the only problem it has that it has it focuses the light inside the telescope tube so the observer need to sit inside the viewer has to sit inside the small cage okay students the same problem can be resolved by having an another mirror and this type of telescope is termed as the cassegrain telescope wherein we have the two mirrors in it now the largest telescope in india is of 2.34 meters and that's in tamil nadu and in world the largest one is in usa with a 10 meters in diameter so you can imagine it's going to be a huge telescopes 
So this is what we learn about the optical instrument. So we are at the end of the chapter, so let's revise. So what we did in this particular chapter, we learned about the reflection, refraction, total internal reflection, the beautiful phenomenon occurring in the nature. We learned about the lenses, prism and the optical instrument. So hoping you'll have followed it. So thank you students. Thank you very much. Do keep studying. Prudent Scholars Powered by Lupin Pharmaceuticals अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में ल्यूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में ल्यूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में ल्यूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस